Hi, boys and girls, and moms and dads, and grandmas and grandpas, and bookstore owners, and people of Earth. I'm Joseph Kiefler. I'm an author and illustrator of picture books, like this one, Beyond the Pond. This was my first picture book, so it's a pretty special book. But I've also made other books, like uh, Rulers of the Playground, The Digger and the Flower. I illustrated a wonderful middle grade book called Evangeline to the Bayou, Cave Boy Crush, and I have a lot of other books coming uh, soon. So I know that most author illustrators have been using their own Instagram feeds to read their books, but I've decided to take my readings to the Instagram feed of my local independent bookstore, Wild Rumpus, um, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's a special place. If you've been there, you know. If you haven't, I encourage you to one day, when all this is over, go there and check it out. And I'm doing that because um, now is a very uncertain time. and. Um, small businesses like independent bookstores they need our help so I wanted to do my small part to support um, a place I love a place that's important to book makers like me to book lovers like you so um, today I'm gonna read Beyond the Pond in future days and weeks I'll read my other books and maybe even share a craft or two so let's start with Beyond the Pond again this is my very first book so it's really special it's the first book that ever found its way on shelves that had my name on it. And um, I think for that reason, I'll always love it, maybe a little bit more than my other books. I love to write dedications. And just to remind you, dedications are the little pieces at the front of a book where the author, well, they're at the back sometimes too, but the author, the illustrator, they um, point to a special person or two, somebody who played a really important role in the creation of a book. For this one, I dedicated it to Jonah for showing me what lies beyond everything. Jonah was, uh, Jonah is my first child. He's 18 now, believe it or not, so he's almost a grown man. But when I made this book many years ago, he was a small boy and he helped uh, inspire the story. He helped me to um, become a picture book maker in the first place. So my first book got dedicated to him. So here we go, Beyond the Pond by me, Joseph Kiefler. Just behind an ordinary house filled with too little fun, Ernest D. had decided today would be the day that he'd explore the depths of his pond. This dog here uh, looks just like a dog I used to have named Marlon Brando. So in case you're wondering why the dog looks that way, it's because it looks just like a whippet that I used to have. So he tried sticking a stick and dipping a hook and sinking a stone, but nothing touched. My pond has no bottom, said Ernest D. <gasps> My pond goes on forever. I've always wanted to explore a pond with no bottom. Oh, how exceptional. If you hear some children playing in the background, it's because my children are outside playing right now. So Ernest D. gathered his explorer supplies, stretched three times, very important, and prepared to set off. I hope they allow dogs down there, said Ernest D. And with that, Ernest D dove down between the fishes and the frogs, past the squid and sharks and shapeless things, into his pond forever deep. He dove into lightless stretches and through sunken treasures. I think someone forgot to turn on the lights in this part of my pond, he said. Ernest D. dove farther into his pond than anyone had ever gone before, until, at last, he came up on the other side. I wonder what's on the other side. The other side of his pond was big and raucous. My kids love the monkey with red butt cheeks. Very funny, but they're real, so also very true. You'll also see dinosaurs and lizards Butterflies, all sorts of fantastical things. It was oh so tiny, oh so tall, and every shape in between. Best of all, it was just for him. But this new place was other things, too. It was ghoulish and ghastly.
It was all things unimaginable. Pretty scary big hand. But Ernest D. was the bravest of explorers. He battled and brawled until the moon ducked low. And in the moment between moonset and sunrise, Ernest D. looked upon the endlessness of his newly discovered land. All this was hiding in a pond, said Ernest D. How exceptional. So he returned to his pond, stretched three times, and dove back into lightless caverns and through sunken treasures, past the squid and sharks and shapeless things, out of his pond and back into the world. But the world wasn't quite as he'd left it. His house seemed a little less small, and his town looked a little less ordinary. Beyond every street and silent corner was a place unexplored. Exceptional, said Ernest D. And if you look on this page, you can see all of the critters that we saw in the, on the other side of his pond. There's a bird, like the bird he flew on. There's squirrels. There are spiders, there's a spider and lizards. There's no monkeys with red butts, but um, those are little details that I hid here. So that's my book, Beyond the Pond. Um, you might be wondering why I made this book. Well, I live in Minnesota, and in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes, there are water bodies everywhere, like ponds and lakes and rivers. So every time I drive around, I see ponds. And um, when I drove my son Jonah to school when he was younger, we would, we would pass this pond that looked really magical and decided to tell stories about what was in that pond. And that's how the idea of a bottomless pond came about. And on top of that, you know, when you're a kid, sometimes you feel like boredom means there's, there's nothing fun to do. There's no option for you whatsoever. But if you just think a little bit differently, if you adventure, if you explore, if you use your imagination, you oftentimes find something quite exceptional, something fun. Um, so that's the story. This book, uh, is available at bookstores like Wild Rumpus um, or your local bookstore. Um, pretty cool. DreamWorks Animation optioned it, which means they're going to try to turn it into a feature-length film. Really exciting for me, even though that probably means nothing will happen, but it's a pretty cool uh, development. So thank you for listening today, and I hope that you uh, support your local bookstores. I hope that you come back for a reading of my other books. And um, have a wonderful day. Thank you.